after studying this module you shall be able to describe the domains of cognitive psychology and define different components of cognitive psychology this module restricts itself to briefly introducing each of these domains these will be elaborated in the subsequent modules After studying this module, you will understand or uh, the uh, domains of cognitive psychology. What are the different domains which are there, and you will also un understand different components which are involved in cognitive psychology, namely memory, learning, uh, per uh, perception, pattern recognition, attention, consciousness, thinking, and concept formation with that of imagery and language. These are the issues which we would be covering in this uh, module. So let's understand what is it all about. First, uh, what uh, modern cognitive psychology is referring to. Modern cognitive psychology draws theories and techniques from different domains of research. Uh, why they are taking these different domains or they are taking help of other areas also? The reason is that uh, because they have introduced uh, uh, neuroscience, they have taken these concept of neuroscience, memory, perception, pattern recognition, attention and thinking in this module so that uh, they can understand the humans in much better way. This will help us in understanding the human, uh, under, uh, human behavior, human thinking and which will further help us in understanding their aspects and uh, their um, attention facilities and further other things. This module will also introduce the concept, uh, all these concepts in brief which we have mentioned earlier, which would be your learning, your memory, perception, thinking, language, imagery. All these uh, texts would be covered uh, later on. Uh, when we have said that why we are taking different domains, the help of different domains in cognitive psychology, the reason would be that uh, there would be certain theories, different theories of different domains and techniques which are used for research work. This will help us in understanding humans in much better way. This is, the, this is the reason why we are taking help of different domains out here to understand cognitive psychology in a be much better manner. Uh, let's understand uh, when we are using a uh, word of cognitive psychology or cognitive science, there is another word which is attached to it is cognitive neuroscience. So what is the meaning of cognitive neuroscience out here? Cognitive neuroscience may be defined as the study of relationships between neuroscience and cognitive psychology, especially those theories of mind dealing with memory, sensation and perception, problem solving, language processing, motor processing, motor functions and so forth. Modern cognitive psychology draws theories and techniques from cognitive neuroscience in the study of our mental character. So whatever you are trying to understand, whether it's perception, thinking, memory, uh, language, every, each and every domain actually refers to cognitive neuroscience for its better understanding because it will help us in understanding the mental processes of a person which, are, which basically help us in problem solving and thinking. So when we are understanding these mental processes, it will help it will basically deal you it will basically tell you the relationship why the person has basically given these kind of answers cognitive neuroscience sees memory sensation problem solving and other processes as neurophysiological correlates or simply as variables of microscopic structures of the brain it tries to define physiological evidence for theoretical properties of mind finds more comprehensive models of brain and behavior establishes relationship between brain psychology and brain behavior uses co computers to model neuro uh, neurological functions and so forth so whatever information we need to assess about a person we can assess it through neuro uh, neuropsychological functions which are involved in the brain of a person when they are dealing with certain problems or when they are when the thinking process is ongoing so let's start with one of these uh, domains which is learning uh, let's have a uh, slight view of what learning is all about and in further modules we will understand each and every domain in detail. First, what is learning? The cognitive view of learning is an approach that views learning as an active mental process of acquiring, remembering and using knowledge. So whatever uh, you learn that is an active process and it is related to knowledge and certain concepts which you need to remember them. Cognitive psychologist assumes that mental processes exist and 
that they can be studied scientifically and the humans are active participants in their own acts of cognition. So whatever they learn, they will learn it with their own uh, mental processes, with their own um, uh, active participation into those areas. If you are not actively participating in that area, you will, that will not help you in remembering those skills in a much easier manner. Cognitive learning includes a change in the way information is processed as a result of perception or experiences a person or animal has had. So any experience which a person has gone through, that experience will help you in remembering those events. When you have remember those events, that events will be easier for you to learn. So you would, the focus would be more, the processes which are involved, mental processes would be applied more because that interest, that experience is of your own uh, specific um, personal uh, interest. Because you have gone through that, uh, exp uh, you have gone through that experience, so you, that will matter much more as compared to experience of other people. Uh, due to past experiences, the significance of and meaning of events change. New associations are formed, and subsequently, these changes get stored in the memory for future use. All these are part of cognitive learning. So even the past experiences which you had that will be stored in your memory. You are, it's basically uh, the way you have learned those events that this is how if I'm going to touch this thing and further it is going to lead to this kind of an response. So this is what you have learned from your past experience. So in future, if the same event is going to happen, you will uh, recon uh, you will recollect the memories of what uh, had happened and then you will change it. You will change the trial and error kind of a procedure which you had used. And that will help you in understanding that, oh, this is the way I have to learn it. Next concept which is there is memory. Uh, when we think of memory, several questions cross the mind. What type of memory do we have? How do we remember and recall things based on our memory? Why do we forget certain things and certain information but clearly remember certain other events or long-term time events? How is this memory uh, stored and organized in our mind? Uh, how can we improve our memory? So all these questions would arise in your mind when you think about this word memory. So psychologists have also tried to seek answers to such questions for long. No other topic has been more comprehensively studied till now as the concept of memory. Psychologists have really made an effort of understanding the concept of memory. Uh, they have one of the most enduring models of memory was proposed by William James in, 19, uh, in 1890 which although underwent significant changes by different people, but it's uh, with an elaboration over time, changes have happened. But there is a one specific thing when specific, uh, when they have reviewed, they have come to one uh, specific model on that, which is, uh, which has been maintained. And the uh, model uh, comprises of that memory would be divided into three areas. First would be sensory memory, second would be short term memory and third would be long term memory. Uh, this gives uh, this uh, basically f helps us in understanding about the module that memory involves more than these storage systems. These are the three storage systems in which memory had been discussed and in-depth analysis of each and every um, uh, storage system will be discussed later in the modules as we have focused on each and every um, uh, in each and every part out there in, in further modules. Memory involves uh, more than these storage systems. It also involves three basic uh, uh, processes that form mental, uh, mental representations and operate on them. It includes encoding, perceiving and re uh, recognizing uh, and recognizing, processing this information further, which makes us remember it later. The way this information is encoded decides on how well it will be remembered. When we perceive some information through our sensory memory, it remains in our short term memory for a short duration of time. This information from short term memory is transferred to the long term memory and it becomes the permanent storage in our long term memory. Uh, fading which might uh, lead to loss of that information. The model of memory and other related concepts are encountered in the modules on memory and uh, further understanding will be uh, in those modules. For the time being the First information which we are getting out here is that memory is divided into three storage systems. Sensory memory through which we get information through our senses, that is environment around us. Second would be short term memory 
the information which is repeated at that time same time is stored into your short term memory the information which is more important to you would be transferred to your permanent memory which, which is your long term memory and the capacity of long term memory is infinite you can store it for not even for hours days but for a very longer period of time that would be for years uh, next is perception in the previous as uh, sections we have used the term perception out here our concern is in this section is with the understanding of perception what perception is all about it is a process through which we come to understand our surroundings we know the human organisms are sensitive to sensory signals that we receive from the environment the process involved with the detection and interpretation of these sensory stimulus is called perception so basically when you perceive something in your environment what is going around you going around uh, your uh, your surroundings or going around you you will try and focus certain uh, focus on those stimuli you will focus your attention on those stimuli the stimuli which you have paid attention would be your uh, would be uh, you further interpret those informations you further give meanings to that and your eyesight may be uh, visual auditory have detected those stimuli that would be termed as perception out here to understand perception first let us understand the term sensation because they both are related sensation refers to the initial uh, detection uh, uh, initial detection structure and processes of sensory mechanisms which could be which involve your eye ear and so on and the stimuli that affect other uh, that affect those mechanisms the term perception on the other hand involves high order cognition in the interpretation of sensory information thus while sensation involves initial detection of the information or stimuli perception means an interpretation of these things we which we sense around our surroundings uh, in other words the perception in perception we make an interpretation of sensory information deriving some meaning from the stimulation when we uh, uh, let's take an example for this thing when you read a book you hear your friend's voice you have a message you might uh, uh, you when we read a book hear a friend you hear a friend's um, voice and there is a message which is left you experience much more than immediate sensory stimulation that is you were reading a book and apart uh, and you also heard the voice of your friend who is just uh, outside the door so there is two sensations which are involved out here first is the uh, sensory uh, first is your visual and the second is auditory so the information which is of your interest you will try and refocus yourself into that if your friend is important you will try and hear what she is trying to say or if you feel that the book is very interesting so you will refocus your attention towards that book so when you start giving interpretations or uh, evaluations towards that thing uh, towards any information that would be termed as perception so if the book is important uh, then uh, the interesting information which is coming out of there you want to interpret the uh, sentences which you have read that would be termed as perception but if your friend's voice is important or friend is important so whatever she is saying you will try and interpret what she is trying to say and detect that stimulus and that information would be termed as perception for you uh, when we are confronted with countless stimuli uh, in, an, in any given environment or time that means a number of stimuli are being bombarded around you with lot of uh, uh, lot of information is being given from those stimuli so how you will respond to them these are the three major components which will be involved in that first would be selection organization and interpretation the first step in perception therefore involves the problem of selection that is to which stimuli do we attend do we attend all the stimuli or we only focus on certain stimuli which are interesting or which we can uh, refocus on next ta task is to understand the stimuli in relation to one another that what is the understanding what you have understood from those stimuli how those in, uh, stimuli would be uh, further uh, interpreted some stimuli are dominant others are subtle some are as are common with others may be unique in some way or the other so the uh, the next step we encounter is how shall we organize this information because there would be lot of information around you but organize it, how you would organize that information that is more important out here third we have already organized this what sort of interpretation you will give out of this information how you are going to interpret it what you have understood that out of that information if you have started explaining these things that information will be transferred into your 
uh, memory if you have given meaningful interpretations of those stimuli. Per uh, perception is thus a crucial determinant of the way we think about things and even influences that content of our thought processes. Understanding that our sensory system receives and what the mind interprets occupies a central position in perception and cognition. Cognitive psychologists are interested in understanding the perception because cognition is presumed to be the co uh, consequence of external events, sensory detection and influence by previous experiences and knowledges about sensory experiences. The next uh, topic out here, next main out here is the pattern recognition. To understand pattern rec recognition, let us revisit what familiar objects did you see today? Ordinarily, the list of things you saw at any particular day would be very long because the whole day what you had seen would be numerous, numerous amount of objects you would have focused on. Now think how did you recognize so many objects and that too so rapidly and accurately. How do we easily recognize the faces of our friends from among a large group of people? Recognize utensil even when it is kept upside down and believe that partly hidden objects exist and also identify them correctly. How do we read words? So all these things would be involved in the concept of pattern recognition. These complex yet seemingly natural actions and processes are possible due to pattern recognition. When we see or hear something or when we receive uh, stimuli from the environment, we tend to categorize the objects on the basis of its perceived features. What we have actually, uh, this, since childhood, you must have seen certain objects, even if that uh, they are partly hidden, you would be able to recognize those objects very easily. Uh, le uh, we would, let's take an example of a toy, which you were very fond of um, in your, since your childhood. Uh, while coming to the adulthood, you must have misplaced that toy somewhere or the other. Uh, supposingly, one day you were cleaning your room, and from some place you were able to see a slight uh, vis the visibility of that object or a toy. But that full object toy was not visible to you. But you could see the corner of it. Uh, the first instant you would be able to recognize that object to be the toy which you used to play which you were fond of. So that is basically a pattern recognition of that toy. Because you were familiar with it, you were, uh, it was holding an interest uh, for you. And uh, this, you were, uh, you had a uh, view about that this is the uh, kind of, this is the object which uh, resembles the toy which I was really fond of. So this is how the pattern recognition works. Because it is, it is a familiar stimuli and it existed in, within your environment and you have perceived the features to be the same one as it was uh, earlier on. We perceive sensory events as part of more meaning, meaningful pattern. To elaborate one specific example, think about the problem of reading. Reading is complex in which a reader is required to form a meaningful pattern from an otherwise uh, meaningless era of lines and curves. By organizing it in stimuli into letters and words, the reader, reader uh, renders meaning to them. This involves a complex interaction between sensation, perception, short-term memory, long-term memory and so forth. What, uh, let's, uh, th there is another way to organize and classify visual stimuli, which was also given by Gestalt psychology, that you perceive the image to be whole rather than into parts. Whatever you perceive the information in, it should, it would be perceived as a holistic picture rather than as a in part. Gestalt psychologists also propose the perception of visual patterns to be organized according to principles of proximity, similarity, spontaneous organization. These will be dealt in detail on the module as of perception when we uh, proceed further. Another concept out here would be attention. All of us face, a, uh, face so many cues around us um, at a given moment. At any given time, our sensory systems are continuously, continually attending to different signals, sounds, uh, smells and other signals from the external environment. Attention refers to selection of certain stimuli for processing from among many and focusing cognitive resources in those selected areas. Attention is a concentration of mental effort on sensory or mental events. Uh, Donald Broadbent in 1958 stated that attention is a result of limited capacity information processing system. His essential idea was the world is made up of many more sensations that can be handled by the perceptual and cognitive 
capabilities of the human observer. Therefore, in order to cope with the flood of available information, humans selectively attend to only some of the cues and tune, not tune out much of the rest. Although at any given time we have more than one information that we have attended to, it is evident that under normal circumstances we are highly selective to the amount of information and type of information to which to attend. Our capacity to process incoming information seems to be limited at two levels, sensory and cognitive. If we have too, uh, too many sensory clues or events to process at, uh, process at any given time, we can become overloaded with that information and we may not be able to perform optimally. Has it ever happened to you at a party when you surround by so many voices and uh, sounds yet to choose to attend to one particular person? Uh, how did you decide on whom to listen and whom to attend to? In answer to this question, research on attention generally covers five major aspects. Uh, processing, capacity, selective attention, levels of arousal, control of attention, consciousness and uh, cognitive neuroscience. Our everyday experience tell us uh, that we attend to some stimuli more than others. Thus, we can control which stimuli are important for us and which are not. So it is a selective base where you pay attention to what is important to you and forget other things or do not pay attention to those things which do not hold importance to you at all. This will be elaborated in the next segment when we would be addressing these issues out there. Uh, next topic would be on consciousness, next domain which is there. Uh, what are you consciously aware of this insta instant? List it down right now. Uh, what is the source of this consciousness? Does your previous experiences or memory play any role out there uh, on your consciousness? Does anyone expect you to know about your thoughts? Did you ever have thoughts that you consciously choose to conceal from others? What made you do so? These are the type of questions that are dealt under the theme of consciousness. Consciousness is the awareness of environment and cognitive events such as sound, sight, activity going on in the world as well as on one's memory, thoughts, feelings and bodily sensations. It is important to note here that consciousness includes both a realization of environmental stimuli as well as about awareness of one's own mental thoughts. These external stimuli and internal often private thoughts which intervene and determine who we are and what we think. Consciousness is also a core concept of cognitive psychology but it has been a difficult one to investigate as the concept is not well defined. People mean different things when they talk about consciousness, so there is no cons uh, common consensus about what consciousness is all about, but, for, but detail would be addressed. Thinking and concept formation. While you read these words, are you thinking? Even when you stop thinking about what you are reading, will you, will you still be thinking? Maybe of something else. We are thinking during most of our uh, uh, waking hours. It is hard not to think. Have you ever thought about what you do when we think? What happens when you think about th thinking? So the, there are a lot of concepts which are involved in thinking. So as it is a loop, whatever you do, it involves a process of thinking somewhere or the other. Thinking and concept formation are from important areas and are important areas of inquiry in cognitive psychology. Thinking is a process by which new mental processes, new mental representations are formed throughout the transformation of information by complex interaction of mental attributes of judging, abstracting, reasoning, imagining and problem solving. Concept formation refers to the uh, disagreement of the properties. Concept for formation is, uh, involves the properties common to class of objects, ideas, discovering rules that relate to these objects and conceptual features. For example, man, blue, square and happy, all are the names of concepts. The human ability to form concepts enable us to clarify, classify things into categories. That uh, with this ability we can sort out objects into category of fruits, uh, non-category, not fruit. When we make a classi classification we tend to behave towards and think about members of the class in a similar way. And humans would be combined into man and male and female. Blue would be categorized into uh, colors, whereas uh, square would be categorized into figures. 
So, uh, these concepts help us to classify the diverse elements in the world around us into meaningful categories uh, that serve as convenient tools for thinking. Human and artificial intelligence is the next, next uh, domain out here. We have seen a wide range of or wide usage of the word intelligence in psychology as well as in everyday life. How, however, despite uh, its wide usage, psychologists do not agree on a single definition of intelligence. We shall consider human intelligence to be the ability to acquire, recall and use knowledge to understand concrete and abstract concepts and relationship among objects and ideas and to use knowledge in a meaningful way. According to uh, Parkins and Smith 1985, human intelligence includes the ability to classify, modify behavior, adaptively, learn, reason, deductively and inductively, generalize, develop conceptual models and understand them. The recent interest in artificial intelligence has caused many psychologists to rethink what is uniquely human about human intelligence and what abilities would be to computer require uh, to act intelligent. Artificial intelligence is broadly defined as a branch of computer psychology, computer science that deals with the development of computers and computer programs which, uh, which uh, cognitive functions, human cognitive func functions would be having it. Some of these implications can be found in speech and form recognition by computers, language understanding software, game playing like chess and motion games are a few to name them. Imaginary to understand is let, let us understand the following task. If you want to understand the concept of imagery. Uh, make a map of the route you took to the college from your home. Write down directions of this route and ask a friend uh, to make the same map based on your instructions. Does the map made by your friend match the map that you have constructed yourself? Can you differentiate between the image that your friend constructed and the one that you have already experienced? These questions often go to larger questions such as what is mental image and what are its properties. Uh, it is the mental image always real? These are some of the questions that have intrigued philosophers and cognitive psychologists alike. Mental imagery is defined as the mental representation of a non-present object or event. It includes visual images as well as images formed during or through our senses. The study of mental imagery image, uh, engages the broader questions of how images how images or information is stored and recalled from memory. Uh, theorists argue, argued that visual information is coded in terms of their internal picture that can be activated by calling upon the picture. It is also argued that visual information is stored as abstract statements about the image. To bring the two together, we would require or we could require, argue that some information is stored visually and some is stored in the abstract form in our mind. This is the concept of imagery. Uh, give a thought to the following questions. Another is language. Let's give a thought to the following questions. How do you recognize a text? How do you comprehend spoken words? What memory processes would reading and writing entail? Do you think that each language has some specific rules? How did you acquire language? Uh, so these are the, some of the questions which uh, language would be holding, uh, would be there and that you may like to seek answers to far as, uh, to as far as language is concerned. Language is a system of communications in which thoughts are transmitted by means of sounds or symbols which would be in form of written words and gestures. Language is the main means of human communication. Language is crucial to a wide range of human actions including communications, thought, perceiving, and representing information, higher order cognitions and neuro neurology. The way information is exchanged, stored and utilized forms an important piece of inquiry in cognitive psychology. Since language is an important component of, component of information processing, storage and, process, uh, storage and perception, all of which are fundamental aspects of cognition, it too becomes a significant point for investigation. So what all we have studied till now in this module Let's go through it. Uh, first, we had addressed about what memory, memory categorization would be all about. Memory can be categorized as sensory memory, short term memory and long term memory. Each has distinctive features. In perception, we make an interpretation of sensory information deriving some meaning from the stimulation. There are three major components of perception, namely selection, organization and interpretation. 
Pattern recognition is the ability to abstract and integrate certain elements of stimulus into an organized scheme of memory storage and retrieval. Gestalt means pattern or configurations. Gestalt psychologists hold and uh, hold that instead of perceiving bits and pieces of unrelated information, people perceive them as organized holes. Attention is the concentration of mental efforts on sensory or mental events. Two broad classes of theorists Theories have tried to explain attention filter theories and capacity theories. Consciousness is the awareness of environment and cognitive events such as sound, sight, activity going on in the world as well as one of the uh, as one well as of one's memory, thoughts, feelings, and bodily sensations. Thinking is a process by which we a new mental uh, representation is formed, and uh, transformation of information by complex interaction of mental attributes of judging, abstracting, reasoning, imaging, and problem solving. Concept formation refers to the dis uh, refers to the properties of a common to a class of objects and ideas and discovering rules and relates to these conceptual features. The different domains of modern cognitive psychology includes cognitive neuroscience, memory, perception, pattern recognition, attention, consciousness, thinking and concept formation, imagery and language. We will learn about each of these in this module. This module will also introduce human and artificial intelligence. Let's begin by acquainting ourselves with cognitive neuroscience. Cognitive neuroscience may be defined as the study of relationship between neuroscience and cognitive psychology. It sees memory, sensation, problem solving and other processes as neurophysiological correlates or simply as variables of microscopic structures of the brain. It tries to find physiological evidence for theoretical properties of mind, finds more comprehensive models of brain and behavior, establishes relationship between brain pathology and behavior, uses computers to model neurological functions and so forth. Next, we confront the issue of how is learning understood in cognitive psychology. The cognitive view of learning is an approach that views learning as an active mental process of acquiring, remembering and using knowledge. Cognitive psychologists assume that mental processes exist, that they can be studied scientifically and that humans are active participants in their own human acts of cognition. When we think of memory, several questions cross our mind. What types of memory do we have? How do we remember and recall things based on our memory? Why do we forget certain information but clearly remember others even after a long time? How is this information stored and organized in our mind? How can we improve our memory? Psychologists have tried to seek answers to such questions for long. One of the most enduring models of memory was proposed by William James, in which memory which can be understood as sensory, short term and long term memory. In perception, we make an interpretation of sensory information, deriving some meaning from the stimulation. There are three major components of perception, namely selection, organization and interpretation. The first step in perception therefore involves the problem of selection, that is, to which stimuli do we attend? Next task is to understand the stimuli in relation to one another. Some stimuli are dominant, others are subtle. Some are common while others may be unique in some way or the other. The next step we encounter is how shall we organize this information. 
third we have already organized this what sort of interpretation do we draw out of it what meaning does it hold to us all these will be discussed in relation to perception in the other modules can you recognize any patterns in these images chances are that your mind itself organized and perceived them into patterns the ability to identify and process visual patterns has been approached from several theoretical positions pattern recognition may be initiated by perceiving separated parts or defining features and assembling them into recognizable patterns which can then be summed this process is known as bottom up approach or as a hypothesis held by the perceiver which leads to recognition of the whole and subsequent recognition of the components this process is known as top down approach the way we organize and classify visual stimuli was studied in gestalt psychology gestalt meaning pattern or configuration during the early part of the 20th century gestalt theorists hold that people organize their perception into coherent wholes here instead of perceiving bits and pieces of unrelated information they usually perceive them as organized wholes the figure above also present a few gestalt principles attention is the concentration of mental effort on sensory or mental events it refers to selection of certain stimuli for processing from among many and focusing cognitive resources in those selected two broad classes of theories have tried to explain attention filter theories and capacity theories filter theories address the selective nature of attention whereas capacity theories address the allocation of resources to specific mental processes according to driscoll what we pay attention to is guided by what we already know what we need to know what else is happening at that time by the complexity of the task and by our ability to control or focus our attention what are you consciously aware of at this instant does anyone except you know about your thoughts did you ever have thoughts that you consciously chose to conceal from others what made you do so these are the types of questions that are dealt under the theme of consciousness consciousness is also a core concept in cognitive psychology it is the awareness of environment and cognitive events such as sound sight activity going on in the world as well as one's memories thoughts feelings and bodily sensations it is important to note here that consciousness includes both a realization of environmental stimuli as well as cognizance of one's own mental thoughts these external stimuli and internal often private thoughts interweave and determine who we are and what we think while you read these words are you thinking even when you stop thinking about what you are reading will you still be thinking maybe of something else that perhaps you will do this brings us to another question what do we do when we think thinking and concept formation form important areas of inquiry in cognitive psychology thinking is a process by which a new mental representation is formed throughout the transformation of information by complex interaction of the mental attributes of judging abstracting reasoning imagining and problem solving concept formation refers to the discernment of the properties common to a class of objects and ideas and discover rules that relate to those conceptual features for example man 
blue, square and happy are all concepts. We have seen a wide usage of the word intelligence in psychology as well as in everyday life. However, despite its wide usage, psychologists do not agree on a single definition of intelligence. Human intelligence includes the ability to acquire, recall and use knowledge to understand concrete and abstract concepts and relationship among objects and ideas and to use knowledge in a meaningful way. The recent interest in artificial intelligence has caused many psychologists to rethink what is uniquely human about human intelligence and what abilities would a computer require to act humanly intelligent? Artificial intelligence is broadly defined as a branch of computer science that deals with the development of computers and computer programs which emulate human cognitive functions. Mental imagery is defined as a mental representation of a non-present object or event. It includes visual images as well as images formed through other senses. The study of mental imagery engages the broader question of how information is stored and recalled from memory. There are three distinct theoretical positions that can be identified regarding how information is stored in memory. The dual coding hypothesis hold that information can be coded and stored as either or both verbal and imaginable systems. The conceptual proposition hypothesis propose that visual and verbal information are represented in the form of abstract propositions about the objects and their relationships. The functional equivalency hypothesis suggests that imagery and perception are highly similar. It can be inferred from the three hypotheses suggests that coding of information is several layered and each of it transcribes information in its unique ways. How did you recognize text in this slide? How did you comprehend these words? What memory processes would reading and writing entail? Can you imagine reading this text if you had no language? How would you imagine communicating your thoughts to others or for that matter to yourself without having language? These are some of the questions that cognitive psychologists seek. Language is a system of communication in which thoughts are transmitted by means of sounds as in speech and music or symbols as in written words and gestures. It is crucial to a wide range of human actions including communication, thought, perceiving and representing information, higher order cognition and neurology. The way information is exchanged, stored and utilized forms an important piece of inquiry in cognitive psychology. Since language is an important component of information processing, storage and perception all of which are fundamental aspects of cognition. It too becomes a significant pivot for investigation. Let us summarize what we have just learned. Domains of cognitive psychology includes cognitive neuroscience, memory, perception, pattern recognition, attention, consciousness, thinking and concept formation, imagery and language. In perception, we make an interpretation of sensory information, deriving some meaning from the stimulation. Pattern recognition is the ability to abstract and integrate certain elements of a stimulus into an organized scheme of memory storage and retrieval. Attention is the concentration of mental effort on sensory or mental events. Filter theories and capacity theories have tried to explain attention. Consciousness 
is the awareness of environment and cognitive events such as sounds, sight, activity going on in the world as well as of one's memories, thoughts, feelings and bodily sensations. Thinking is a process by which a new mental representation is formed throughout the transformation of information by complex interaction of the mental attributes of judging, abstracting, reasoning, imagining and problem solving. Concept formation refers to the discernment of the properties common to a class of objects and ideas and discovering rules that relate to those conceptual features.